Hey everybody, as promised, we are bringing you footage from the Battlefield 3 update. As you can see, this is version 1.04. Uh, when we fired up this morning, it uh, had us do this update. This is, of course, in fast forward. It did take a lot longer than this. It is a full gig. A full gigo update. Uh, gotta say that we didn't we didn't notice a ton of changes. We're gonna go through those. Oh, what's that rent a server? Yes, um, I think rent a server is awesome. Um, the ability to be able to change all of your own settings to your liking is a great thing. The uh, one question in the air right now is how much that rent will cost. You? Um, that's actually not up in the air. Oh. Uh, there's a price list if you're if you're ever able to get into the menu. Um, a server is a dollar forty nine a day on the day rate, and it goes all the way up to ninety days for sixty five dollars. So there's a little bit of a discount the more you rent. Also, there's a new option matches. So we have a pop up right here that says uh, we're not scheduled for any esport matches. That is correct. That is totally I'm true. We are not. Um, but I'm excited about that as well. I think that that is supposed to be fixing the problem of. Before, when people would squad up and they'd get into a game, sometimes they'd show up on different teams or in different parts of the same team, and now I'm assuming that that is designed for um, just to fix that problem, but I might be wrong about that. And the final thing that will be immediately apparent to you is a quit button. Now, after a round, you don't have to wait around for the next round to start. Uh, I think this is something that is going to make people probably the most happy out of just about anything in the patch. Mm -hmm. So what we have here is the SCAR. Um, we are shooting it at about medium range using only the grip um, at a wall. In the upper left corner is the uh, version 1.4 update for PS3. Lower right corner is the Xbox 360. And, you know, I... Not seeing massive differences here. It seems like a lot of the changes in the patch are really going to be, you know, probably something that a player will be able to recognize if they use a weapon all the time. It gets a little bit more noticeable out here at long range, um, which is what was kind of the nerf, I guess, on the grip. It was uh, supposed to have less aimed accuracy at long range. So uh, if, if viewers at home, sorry, you'll have to make your screen big, can uh, see our shot groupings on the wall, um, you'll notice they're probably a little bit, uh, probably a little bit wider on the PS3 version than the 360 version. But overall, not a huge stat change. I think also part of the thing is that the, you know, the aimed accuracy decreases. But I think that um, what they've also done though is improve the recoil, so the feel of it might not be um, as noticeable to the senses. So in these clips, uh, I was just demonstrating to viewers that yes, even though there have been changes to the grip, uh, you can still use it quite well in matches. You'll notice I did have one long range shot where I didn't, I didn't land a single hit marker. That may be a result of, of that happening. But like here, this is where the, where the grips and its element is uh, close range combat. And I totally should not be aiming down my side here. <laughs> So next step, we're going to pull out the 249. We're going to pull off all the accessories. And uh, we're just going to do a control group. This is auto fire at a wall. As you can see, the 249 could hit the broadside of a barn. But uh, <laughs> at beyond this range, I'm not sure if it could hit much else. It's kind of interesting. On full auto, the grouping fills the whole of the larger circle on the side, the rear so side. So this is with the flash suppressor, which is supposed to now be a better recoil reducer than the silencer was. Uh, it looks pretty effective. Looks like it brought down the grouping a little bit. Not, not a massive change. I did notice when I was firing the weapon, though, that after that initial kick, when I had the flash suppressor on it, the recoil mostly went away. And I'm guessing, I'm guessing that's the main result. How did you feel with uh, the older version on the 360? Um, I did not really get as much out of it as I think I would have from using the regular suppressor, honestly. So here, uh, just for the hell of it, we moved out to really long range with the 249. This uh, weapon's actually pretty good in burst fire at this range, but we went full auto with a flash suppressor just to see what we could do with after the patch. And um, I will refer you to my broadside of the barn comment from earlier. <laughs> Indeed, it can hit the broadside of a barn, but uh, 
<laughs> Not much else. You can hit the whole broadside of the barn. The All of the entire broadside of the barn. So there you can see uh, our shot groupings from various shenanigans. So next up is the surface-to-air missile. Um, no, no, this one, this one is going to be contentious, I think. You're going to see some pretty big changes. Going into this patch, we thought that it was going to curry favor with the ground soldier. Turns out, um, maybe the air has it on this one. Yeah, I, I think that the the range decrease is probably going to anger a few people. But I do have to say that the one hit disable on at least on the, like the little birds um, is kind of beneficial. Like when I went back and played the 361 to compare it, um, did the same match. Did, you know, did uh, did nose hair canals here and still, you know, I had several shots on target and it was just getting hit markers. So that previous helicopter did have probably below radar enabled, so I couldn't lock on anyway, even though I had a faster lock on if I could. All right, so moving on to Operation Firestorm. Um, this is where you're gonna see some of the really big changes with the uh, service to error limited range. So I'm locking onto this jet because it is in my base, but uh, in a minute you'll see me get frustrated. Didn't land a hit marker there with that shot. And I am about to <laughs> dump this guy over a hill. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm sure he was happy about that. Okay, so you'll see in a second the comparison, but this is uh, now with the patch. I am standing on the hill. Uh, down the lower right corner, you can now see the 360. And uh, Ryan, you were just locking on all day. Yeah, I'm. you know, it's said in the patch notes that the lock-on happens faster, and I, I think that they also kind of just tweaked the feel of it so that it, it maybe it does lock on faster after the patch, but because of the range difference, and also um, it seems like you draw the tone a lot faster in the old version. Um, like well, or draw the tone at all, because in the upper left corner, you can see me in version 1.4 going doop to doop to do, doop to doop to do, doop to do. Okay, we're gonna run down the hill. Now, were, did you notice that you were locking on faster at all? Like when you were locking on? When I was locking on, I did, and you'll see this come up in a second with helicopters. I did fire faster than you did with the uh, 360 version but as you can see here I, I could not lock on and and even when i locked on jets sort of just leisurely coasted away out of my lock on range <laughs> so here, here on the helicopters okay so this is where you'll see the difference you can hear the tones right now my shot got off first so what we concluded is that um the patch did let you disable scout helicopters in one hit but uh we didn't experience that with the transport helicopters it still took two strikes to disable uh yeah it didn't it didn't seem like we were getting all vehicles all disabled with um with the with the stinger so stinger may be more effective against scout helicopters now um marginally a little better maybe against uh, transport helicopters but uh not so much as to negate that new range of disadvantage yeah it, it i i think ultimately it, it benefits the pilots in the end. Okay, on to our next clip for a bit of fun. Uh, we decided to check the fall damage and... Uh, and, <laughs> and wait, look at that, right there. Uh, but yeah, you were not able to get over that railing after the patch. Uh, well, it took you three or four tries. Yes, it did take me quite a bit longer to get over that. So, railing. ladies and gentlemen, now it will only take you two <laughs> tries to get over the railing. Uh, we're both up here planning C4, preparing for our jumps. Uh, I just went for it, went off the second story. I know the patch is supposed to say low falls, but what the heck? And uh, wow, you just you just went for it. <laughs> yeah, and actually the first time I did that, I ended up with a suicide. So your damage was what? Twenty. I was down to 26, and you were down to 70. I was down to 70. So that's pretty significant damage yeah, reduction. That's a coming off major of. damage reduction. So going to our first story drop, what did you have there? When I did the first story drop, I never took any damage. And I took, I think, 30 damage? You took about 25, I think. Yeah, so maybe uh, a little bit inconsistent still? Uh, yeah, I would say so. And uh, finally, the supposed 
prone to standing speed up. I'm not seeing any difference. I did not see any difference either. I think we both got up at the exact same speed in one of those moments. This new version, some changes seem to be true. Some seem to be insignificant. I I'm waiting to get on my own account and get on my, you, you know, the weapons I normally use where I think I might actually notice uh, a difference. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, sorry we couldn't get our hands on a Mav to try and do a Mav suicide kill today, but uh, hopefully we can get you some gameplay of that in the future. Thanks for watching.